Next stage with Mothership on Solid Rock Radio begins now. Hear the best in new music, artist interviews, stories from the road, and more. You are now backstage, and here's your host, Mothership. Hey, everybody. My guest this week is the multi-talented musician Mark Opera. He's the guitarist and vocalist for Amongst the Giants. He's currently a touring guitarist and bassist with Disciple. And Marco's played on the road with many bands like Spoken, Seventh Day Slumber, Zana, and more. He just recently played for the very successful Disciple live streams. So I thought it was time for us to have a little talk and catch up. I hope you enjoy our conversation as much as I did. So, Marco Barrero, what have you been up to? I just drove home from Nashville about two days ago. We did the Horseshoes and Hand Grenades show, and then we went to a cabin with the Disciple Boys to write. Got some ideas down for the next Disciple album, so that's really fun. I looked at some apartments for me and my fiance. We're moving up there in May after we get married, and we already found a place, so I'm really very, very excited. May 8th. Congratulations! Thank you. Uh, It just so happens to be like 10 minutes from Josiah, from Drew, a little bit less than 20 minutes away from the city. That's Nashville? Yeah. Okay, good deal. So, Marco, how long have you been playing guitar? Since I was 12. (laughs) I'm 25 now, so about 13 years. Wow. A lot's happened in 13 years. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, I started probably around when I was 12. I was in middle school, listened to Skillet was a big one for me at first. And then like I progressively got heavier and heavier and heavier. I mean, I, I liked music growing up. You know, my dad was a musician. My dad, you know, he, he led worship and he played guitar. So I remember he bought me a guitar and I was like eight. I wasn't interested in it at the time. And then when I turned like 12, my brother got a guitar and then I ended up playing more of it. It just kind of took off from there. I got lessons yeah. maybe about five months, six months. It came was, natural. It, it could, no. Yeah, a, a little bit, a little bit in the sense of like, uh, I just knew I really wanted to learn how to do it and do it cool. Because like I was playing like Guitar Hero and stuff, getting introduced to all of like these rock bands and metal bands, classic and whatnot. And I was like, I want to be able to do that. Like I listened to guitar solos. I'm like, I want to be able to do that. You know, I had a good teacher, taught me some basic technique. And I, I was pretty much on my own after that. Started a band with Brian, my Monks of Giants vocalist, before I even really knew how to play. It, it, it was good. It was good times. I went on my first tour fresh out of high school, took a semester off of college to do it. And I really, really enjoyed it. And I'm like, this is what I want to do. But I went to college for music. I didn't finish my degree because I got the opportunity to tour when I was 21 again. And I was like, toward my last few semesters, And I just kind of dipped. I was just like, nope, I'm going to go do this. That was the Spoken Tour I went on in 2017. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. That was the first tour. wow. So that was kind of when I first met you. It was around that time, I think. You've played for quite a few bands. Yes. Um, Right now, you're touring guitarist for Disciple. Yeah, guitarist, whatever, whatever's Or bass. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. And then you've also played, uh, well, you also play with Amongst the Giants, yes. your vocals and guitar there. Mm-hmm. Who else have you played for? I played for Zana. I played for Seventh Day for two years. Right around the time when Jeremy was kind of transitioning off the road, I was playing with them pretty frequently. And then Spoken, I did a show with Random Hero, you know, a few. Uh, and then, of course, I played in some bands in college. I played drums for a punk band in college. That was fun. Then, of course, the band that I toured with for the first time, which was actually a Seventh Day Slumber Tour, which is how I met them in the first place when I was 18. I met Jeremy when I was 18, and we kind of hit it off and have kind of continued a relationship. Do you enjoy being the hired gun? I do. Uh, I, I do enjoy being a hired gun. As far as like the hired gun, I didn't see that as like a thing. I didn't even realize it was a thing. I was just like, I, I thought you're just in a band and you make it or you don't make it. I didn't realize that you could actually make a career out of filling in for other people. You know, or you can actually make some money doing it. And and it actually helps your own music as well because you meet more people. You know, I've been playing with Disciple. I did my first Disciple show in May of 2019. Play guitar. It was in Pensacola, Florida. Super fun show. And then I played with them again. And then I went on tour with Seventh Day uh, on the Summer Rock Fest of 2019. And then after that, I played with Disciple again in September and then did CRN. Uh, That was really, really fun. I'm trying to think of the timeline because there is a timeline to this of like how it like slowly progressed. With the Disciple guys, it's actually been pretty special, you know, but something just kind of clicked on something. It was really, really cool. I consider them really good friends of mine. I'm stoked that they wanted to write music or wanted me to be a part of it. It was cool. It's really, really exciting. 
we were supposed to be on the road a decent amount last year. I was playing bass. John Panzer was playing guitar. It was around, you know, January, February of last year. And that's right before the coronavirus hit. We were pretty much on tour until that hit. And then it got canceled. That's the one we went to down in South Georgia. We saw you. You Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That was that was my first. Oh, that was my first show playing with them on, on bass. So I was super nervous. I'm like, I've never performed bass before. I've only tracked it in the studio. You know, well, I, you didn't sound or look nervous. Thank you. Yeah. No, it was fun. P- performing bass is fun. It's uh, There's actually a difference between performing bass and performing guitar. It's a bigger instrument, so the weight is more distributed. You know, it's actually pretty fun. You can kind of swing it around and stuff. It, it, it was fun. We actually had quite a few plans for the rest of that year. Loud and proud. But, and then I got canceled, of course, for, for that year. Several other things. Also, amongst the Giants, we were supposed to play Creation. We were supposed to play Life Fest. We were playing some of this, some of the festivals. Like, we played KCF, and we did Chains and Chain. I feel like I'm missing some. And I it, it ended up being like a three-week block period in the summer. Mm-hmm. where I was playing for Zana, Amongst the Giants, and Disciple. Disciple, I was doing the, the second live stream. That was fun, playing bass for that. Uh, and then Amongst the Giants, uh, we had a couple of uh, like shows to connect some of those uh, festival dates. We were bummed that a lot of the festivals canceled, but we had a feeling it was going to happen. More than anything, we were just stoked to be playing some shows because like, we're still a new band, you know? So for when stuff like that happens, it, it can be a little disheartening because it's like, wow, we, we had just started working with Kellen that year too and like we, we had a lot of stuff planned and we were really really excited about you know the, the prospects of the year and then of course covid hit like, i'm sure there's a lot of other bands with the exact same story you know oh, so yeah. everything yeah. screeched to a halt <laughs> unfortunately you know uh there's still ways to stay connected and whatnot as things get even somewhat close back to normal i'm going to be back to work i'm making the choice to move up to nashville to be closer to the action on purpose because i mm-hmm. still had to end up driving up and down last year a, a few times not quite as much as like in 2019 like I was just going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Yeah. yeah. yeah refresh my memory. You're in Florida, right? South Florida, literally the bottom. Oh. So half of the drive to Nashville is getting out of Florida. <laughs> yes. Being from Georgia, I'm very familiar. That is yeah. quite the drive. So how easy is it to switch from a one band to another? It's like, say somebody hires you out. Do you have to have somebody show you what to do or do you just does it just come natural for you? It's funny because it, it depends. I remember, like, especially in the beginning, some of these bands, like I had to learn everything by ear because there's no videos for it. You'd be lucky if there's a prior band member who can help you learn the parts. And I've had to do both, you know, like, yes, it's easier and faster when someone else shows you the parts exactly, because it, it's kind of like working twice where it's like you learn everything, you know, as close as you possibly can. And then when you get there and the people who actually know what they're doing are like, actually, it's like this. So you kind of have to relearn it. Yeah, I can spend the time and learn everything and get it pretty, pretty close. But for me, it's like if there's any kind of resource, Josie sent me, I don't even know how many videos. I, I think I've learned more Disciple songs last year than I have in like like any other because Because we did three live streams and one of them was a people's choice. So there was like a lot of songs that I just didn't even know. <laughs> like, I didn't even know. Existed. To be honest, the uh, the band didn't even know them either, probably. Nope. <laughs> well, they had to relearn some stuff, you know? Yes. And then this and this last one, Horseshoes and Hand Grenades, uh, I mean, again, I had to learn a few, not, not as much as the People's Choice, but uh, for Horseshoes and Hand Grenades, we played pretty much the entire album, and then the 2.0 guys played Shot, Heard Around the World, and Battle Line, so I didn't have to learn that, so I was sweet. Those are, the, those are, from what I understand, the two hardest songs on the record. And then we did Darkness Dies and Enemy. You know, I remember, like, feeling some heat uh, for a while, especially when I was playing in the summer, because I was playing for three bands. I, I barely had time to rehearse my music. I was like, okay, my music, I, I wrote it. I can remember that. That's fine. Mm-hmm. You know, but, like, Susie's music, I haven't played since, like, last year. I'm like, okay, I need to refresh that. And then we had the live stream and we had the festival shows, which had different sets. My answer to your question is both. Yes. <laughs> it's been fun, yeah. you know, and, and it's been a challenge to me as a musician as well. What's your favorite Disciple song? Ever? Yeah, ever. Probably Oh God. Oh, God Save Us All. That's like the album I was introduced to. I remember seeing them live on my first tour when I was 18. And I was like, wow, these guys are really heavy. I've heard their name growing up. They never really, really crossed my radar aside from the singles I'd hear on the radio. And then I remember hearing that album like, yo, this album rips. It's awesome. That was before Joey even joined. I saw them and it was Drew and Josiah and they were pretty fresh. That was in 2013. Yeah. So probably Oh God Save Us All. And that album as a whole is probably my favorite. It's one of my favorites, too. What's your favorite Disciple song to play? In terms of performing it? Ooh. Yeah, because it's just fun. I'm going to have to name at least three. Okay. All right. <laughs> I will allow it. Oh, God being one of them, because we have like that fun outro we do and the breakdown and stuff. That's always fun. Uh, Big Bad Wolf is really, really fun. 
you know, was really fun was one that I'd never played before on the People's Choice. Back Again was really, really fun. That was just kind of a straight banger. It was just like really, really heavy, you know, just kind of like you just kind of do what you want. And I like songs where I don't have to play as much because I can just sort of run around and spin <laughs> stuff around and look really crazy because that's fun for me. <laughs> OK, so Marco, backflip win. I w- oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. You saw that, right? (laughs) Yes, I did. Micah is not a spring chicken anymore. I give him an A for effort. Bless his heart. Oh, my gosh, dude. (laughs) Like, that was... (laughs) We were cracking up. Because, like, he he did it. He did do it. But then... (laughs) Oh, like yeah. what, what what we got was better than if he had actually nailed it. Perfect. That was awesome. That was oh, hilarious. Yeah. Well, I can't, uh, do a back, can't do a backflip. Maybe one day. You know, okay. I, would love- I, I thought maybe that would be a requirement for that position, you know. Oh, my gosh. I <laughs> wish I could do a backflip. Backstage with Mothership returns after this. Out Performance Shop is a proud supporter of Solid Rock Radio. They specialize in retail and wholesale of automotive, high-performance, racing, and off-road products. They also carry a variety of accessories from remote control cars to rock and roller multi-carts. On the web at outperformance.com. So now we're going to shift gears. We're going to talk about Amongst the Giants. Okay. Called Amongst the Giants the whole time, or did it just kind of morph into that? It kind of morphed into it. The name just kind of came to me. And I was like, we've had the opportunity to play with other bands thus far amongst these musical giants. This is the reason why I want this name. Also, I was inspired after um, a sermon my dad taught. The idea of standing tall and standing firm, like the idea of, yeah, we're the new kids on the block, but we're creating something that's worthwhile. But I love the name. Yeah. After that tour was spoken in 2017, I decided with Brian, I was like, hey, man, let's go up to Nashville. Let's just pile our own money together and get a record done. Jeremy from Seventh Day Slumber was already interested in producing something. He'd been talking to us about it for a long time. And I showed him some early demos. And he's like, yeah, man, let's do this. So it started off as like a four song EP in December of 2017 team to record those first four songs it was just me and brian at that point and we knew that we were going to have a really good product and we knew that it was going to be called amongst the giants now you write a lot of that music as well you and brian how does the creative process work a lot of it uh, i wrote the music or at least like the majority of the music either by myself or with brian some of those songs on obscene we wrote in college so brian is an extremely talented human being there were some songs not all of them but there were some songs that he just wrote guitar on midi and programmed drums because he's kind of like a producer in his own right he can write stuff on his own he's primarily a vocalist also he's a super talented musician understands theory very well song structure very well the first record between me, Brian, and then Jeremy, and then Blaze helped us when he joined us. But like Obscene, we wrote together at, at Joseph's house. Yeah, collaboration. Same thing with the new ones. We'll have ideas we bring from home, like rough ideas, and I'll purposely not shell it out too much because I want the collaboration. I don't want to get married to anything. You know, just kind of mm-hmm. be like, we can either take this or we can leave this or we can go in a different direction. Kellen's a fantastic songwriter. He's been co-writing this whole record with us and it's been super awesome and josiah as well josiah uh wrote a song with us as well well you can't get better than those two guys (laughs) yeah that's what i'm saying you know like why would i try and write everything by myself when i have so many talented people around me who can make it better so when did it make sense to go on to the rockfest records label we were approached We didn't even know it it was a thing yet. It was kind of before he announced it. So after the time we had in Nashville where we were recording, Joseph came by with Blaze, listened to it, and he was impressed, and he liked it. And he's like, yeah, man, uh, I think it'd be cool if, you know, Blaze could write some stuff with you. You know, we were just kind of spitballing ideas at that point. We were just stoked to be there. And then after we finished the four songs, because at that point we were not on any label. We had no idea how we were going to release those songs. Uh, We were like, we're going to have to DIY it. The guys were talking about buying a vehicle. I'm like, you guys are crazy. We don't even have a full band. (laughs) Like, it's literally just me and you right now. What are you talking about buying a vehicle? Let's have a band first. (laughs) And then I think the day after Brian gets a call from Joseph, he's like, hey, we need to talk like right now. Uh, we were actually on vacation in North Carolina with friends when we got the call right around New Year's. Uh, Brian had already left to go home, but we got on the phone together. And I remember, oh, my gosh, this is an insane night. You know, it was just one of those nights. Where, OK, God's doing something with this because like it was literally the day after they talked about getting the vehicle. And I'm like, you guys are crazy. Like, well, let's take this one step at a time, you know. And he basically approached us and he was like, hey, so I'm starting a label and I want to sign you guys. And I'm like, what? What are you talking about? What do you mean? We're barely a band. We have some songs written. We have no shows under our belts uh, as this band. Like shows under our belt, but not as this band. That was when he kind of laid the groundwork. He said, well, I'll handle the release uh, instead of the four-song EP. Write 10 songs, make it a full-length record. And we're like, okay, let's go. 
let's do it. And that was when we were like, okay, God, you're doing something. And then as things kind of progressed, you know, um, went back into the studio around February to continue writing. We had a fifth song in. And then as soon as we drop into Nashville, like we get off the plane, Joseph calls me. He's like, hey, man, so Jeremy isn't going to be able to make this City Rock Fest tour. I was wondering if you could play for Seven Day Slumber uh, for this tour. I was like, yeah, of course. At that point, I was just itching to get back on the road. It had been so long. And I'm like, yeah, let's go. I was so stoked. It was super fun. It was super, super fun. Well, yeah, you had the concert in Spring Hill. Yeah, and that's yep, where yep, yep. I drove up and brought the, the food uh, yeah. from Atlanta. How many people were in that show? They were like, there was a lot. It was like both legs of the tour playing at the same time. I made 10 boxes of pudding and probably had like 24 bananas and two boxes of Nilla wafers. <laughs> and then the church had a punch bowl and I made. Yep, I remember now. Like that was, yeah, that was a super fun tour. That was my first tour playing for Seventh Day Slumber. I remember being super stoked because um, Wolves of the Gate was on there and like I listened to them like they were like they were a band I listened to. And I was like, that's really, really cool. You know, like so that's how I met those guys. Spoken was on there. I played with them prior. Uh, I didn't play with them on that tour. Um, Random Hero. As we ascend. I, as we ascend. That's right. And they rode on the bus with us. That was super cool. I love Jake and Justin. Uh, Robert did a couple shows with us, too, and that, with them, too. And that was really, really cool. To hang out with them. They were really, really friendly, really nice. Brian was on that tour. He wasn't playing, but he was doing lights. And then we did our first tour as a band that summer, which was which was a summer rock fest. And that was Seventh Day Headlining, Spoken, Direct Support, and then GFM, Random Hero, Zana, and us. It was a lot. It was a lot of bands. It was. It was. Of, that was our first tour as a band. First show as a band was Life Fest 2018, which was awesome. Oh my gosh, we had such a fun time. Like it was such a great crowd for us too. It was just like it was a surreal experience because there were people like moshing. I didn't expect. It. I think after that tour, I had some time off because um, I didn't tour much in the winter after that. Then did City Rock Fest the next year again summer again did that show with disciple in may we did city rock fest 2019 with uh with amongst the giants that was our second tour yeah and that was with righteous vendetta the protest yeah it was that was really cool you know so like we we, we kind of got to know everyone in that in, in that circle in that scene and we all just kind of really really liked each other and it was really really fun as a band super blessed uh have those experiences be our first ones as a band collectively you know it was really really cool wouldn't trade anything in the world you don't realize how much you take it for granted until it's kind of taken away from you we were just kind of getting a taste for it doing it full time like two years in a row almost three i was gone for like five six months out of the year and i was so stoked about that it was probably the longest i'd been away from home at, at one point you know what i mean it was it was really really nice i think people think of marco para they think of guitar I you have that. a wonderful voice thank you thank you so with Amongst the Giants, I pretty much do the majority of the cleans. So any chorus, anything just singing. Uh, mm -hmm. And then I do some screams as well. But me and Brian switch it up because we just think it's cool. Brian's got a really cool scream and he's got a lot of endurance. This next record we put out, you're going to hear him. You're going to hear him sing. Like he had like a few parts on the first mm -hmm. record, but we just kind of kept it, you know, for the most part. Like I did all the singing and he did all the screaming and I did some screaming. Call it, I guess co-vocal i don't know dude like i don't know brian's the front man and he kills it as far as that goes i've been singing since i was a kid trying mm -hmm. to sing since i was a kid uh and my first times like really you know singing in front of people was leading worship and that's like for me the most comfortable you know mm -hmm. i remember doing this rock metal thing it, it was kind of a challenge for me because it was like okay this is a different style you know like i have to put something on that's a little bit different uh but i learned over the last few years especially in the studio like in the studio my voice was tested 100 percent do okay. you feel more at home with clean vocals then? I don't know. Um, because so the vocalists I look up to, people like Matt from Event Sevenfold, Chester from Lincoln Park, David from Disturbed, anybody who has a really distinct, like raspy, mm -hmm. really cool voice, that's the stuff I always grew up listening to, like John from Skillet too. You know, all of those bands. And singing, the lines are kind of blurred sometimes, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And that's kind of what I wanted for my voice, that blend. For me, screaming takes less brain power. <laughs> Less brain power, but still a lot of talent. We'll hear more from Marco Pera shortly. Check us out on Facebook at I'm with Mothership. You're listening to Backstage with Mothership on Solid Rock Radio. So if someone said you have to choose between vocals, Ooh. guitar, or bass. Ooh, that's hard. We know this isn't going to happen, so. <laughs> no, it's not. Listen, bass is fun, don't get me wrong. The reason I know how to play bass is because I know how to play guitar. 
Okay, so, so we're going to eliminate the bass. Yeah. Get, now we got to decide between vocals and guitar. <laughs> That's hard, man. You know what's funny? I have these thoughts in my head. It's like, dude, because like this happens to people. So what happens if I suffer like a terrible injury to like one of my extremities, like my hands, and I can't play anymore? I'm like, well, I can still sing. I would still be really sad. I, I kind of go through phases because also not really known because I haven't done this in, in this circle, but I also played drums. Yeah, that, that was actually a huge part of my life, drums mm-hmm. at one point, because I marched in high school. And actually, more than anything, that experience made me a better guitar player, you know? So if I were to have to pick one, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I guess at the end of the day, kicking and screaming, I would say guitar. You okay. know, at the end of the day, take any one of those things away from me, I would not be a happy person. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that. Okay, Amongst the Giants have had uh, some hints here. L- loyal measures has been at the top of the charts i still don't understand why i love that song dude that's so much fun to perform we wrote basically two radio singles for that record uh, beneath the weight and too late and too late being the first song we did and the one that we probably got the most traction out of all of them i love the song uh it's one of my favorite ones to perform too we knew that song was going to be different because we played it a few times on that first tour and every single time we played it, someone from the tour would be like, what was that song? Oh, that was too late. I know we haven't played that every night. You know, they're like, you guys need to play that every night. That song's really good. And I was like, all right. And it ended up doing some really cool stuff for us. We did our video. It streamed over 100,000 times on Spotify. It's our most streamed song. I really love the music video Joel did with us. Mm-hmm. It's technically the second music video I've ever been a part of, but I don't like talking about the first one. So, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, maybe I'll show it to you one day. Okay. But uh, I couldn't be happier, essentially. You know what I mean? We're a brand new band, and there's some people that are latching onto this, and I was really, really stoked about it. You know? So, yeah, that song did a lot of really cool things for us. We were really, really stoked. As a musicianary, is that one of the songs that you get the most testimonies from? Is that Ooh. one of the ones? Or is That's there a good a... question. We definitely do. Uh, but there are other songs, too, like Beneath mm-hmm. the Weight is another song that I wrote a lot of lyrics to. It talks about my anxiety. I'm sure I've shared this quite a bit on social media. I deal with anxiety. I've dealt with this since I was a kid, like panic attacks and stuff like that. So I wrote a song about it. It wasn't just me. It was a collaboration, obviously. But like that's kind of how it started. I was like, I want to write a song about this. Here's some ideas I have. And then we just kind of bring it together. I've heard a few testimonials about beneath the weight people being like that song really speaks to me i really really like that song um but yeah too late we hear we hear about that one a lot uh, absolutely but even like some of the songs that are a little bit more i guess obscure on the record that surprised the heck out of me like i know lost in translation was the first song we ever released ever that was a song we wrote in college uh we heard some things about that glimpse of life also i'm trying to think because there are some people who reached out i was just, wow there's some people that are actually listening to our music my mindset going into i was like dude we are nobodies you know what i mean that was our, that was my mentality it's like we are nobody less than nobodies it was and it was then very, god it, swoops in and uses you and it was insane it really was i was not expecting it more than several times it made me super emotional because I never thought I would ever be able to share in something like that. You know, I'd always wanted more than just performing. I wanted to create something that people relate to. We we all collectively like write and we things we care about. Hopefully someone hears it and somebody is, is touched by it or is ministered to by it. Or if they're not a Christian, something that they relate to, whatever you want to call it, you know, um, the feedback we've gotten. I remember like there were some times where I was like, wow, like that's really insane i remember the first time someone got the amongst the giants logo tattooed and i (laughs) almost hyperventilated i was i had a panic attack over it (laughs) not because i was like why would you do that i was just like oh my gosh like all of a sudden like it got really real really fast Mm -hmm. wow okay eternally grateful for that because there were a few amongst the giants tattoos and i was like what what like we have one album out what are you kidding me the fact that it mattered that much to somebody humbled me i was like wow okay you know there's a lot of messages being thrown out out there you know there's a lot of people who have their own reasons for sharing the things they do i firmly believe that we're here to make a positive impact on the world we're here to ultimately share the joy the light of christ through whatever avenue we can that's always been the core of you know what we want this are we a christian band are we this is like you can call us whatever you want i don't really care we're not gonna lie to you about what we're trying to do we're not gonna lie to you about what we're writing about because we've gotten criticism from both sides oh we don't talk about jesus enough oh we've gotten it too much listen we write about things that aren't necessarily directly about christ but this is stuff that christ is working on in my life you know so i'm going to share about it okay so we have to talk about your hair Oh, gosh. <laughs> well, you know, there's just certain people who have a luxurious mane of hair, and you're one of them. I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> if you saw me in college, you'd be pretty surprised. I had short hair for a, a little bit of time there. I had long hair in high school, mm-hmm. and then I met my fiance, and I had short hair. And then she saw pictures of me with long hair and told me my, my long hair looks better. Okay, fine. I'll grow my hair back out. Fine. And uh, I. <laughs> 
I did. She, she's laughing. I hear her in the background now. <laughs> she's laughing at me. You didn't have to twist my arm that much. I missed my hair. Yeah, I did the clean cut thing for a while. Let's see if I can grow up. And I'm like, you know what? I think I'm just one of those guys who like, I just have long hair and that's me. That's it. You know, it is me. Yeah, it is uh, you. As much of a pain in the butt it is, because mm-hmm. it is. Without it, especially on stage, it feels like something's missing for me. Pretty much decided that you can't play a guitar unless you have long hair. You'll lose Kevin your powers. straight up says he will fire me if I cut up if I cut my hair. <laughs> so am I allowed to say that? It doesn't matter. I'm saying it. Well, you should be proud of it. It's a nice head of hair. So yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Something I always ask is your favorite road snacks. A lot of unhealthy things, unfortunately. I've been trying to be a lot more health conscious in the last year. At the time, my go-to drink was Coke, always. So bad for you, but so good. Easiest ones I can think of are, like, for me, like, hot Cheetos and, like, hot fries. I, I've loved those since I was a kid. That was a big one for me. Kind of like Blaze with Tapatio's. Beef jerky is a good one. I guess you can call that a healthier option because it's more protein, but it's really not. This isn't a snack, but, like, like the whole pizza stereotype is 100% true. It's mm. just so easy. I got to say, I can't mention tour food without mentioning Sheets because Matt Baird introduced me to Sheets in 2017 and I've never uh-huh. looked back. It's the one thing that I, I look forward to so much. Uh, we live in Georgia. There are no Sheets here. Ah, so and so when we went to Uprise for the first time in 2017, I think oh, it was, God. I yes. saw on the little road sign it said Sheets. I said, Dan, we got to stop. I said, Matt Baird says we have to stop at Sheets. <laughs> but we didn't stop till we got to Pennsylvania and, right. we, we, and we actually just walked into Sheets. We didn't eat any food because well, kind of we, we, <laughs> well, we, we actually so had already eaten. gas station hold on <laughs> no. Wait a minute, this is like qt what's the deal Br- racetrack you know? <laughs> it's like no, no once won't. you eat the food you know we had already eaten and i says uh, i said we'll have to come back but i bought gift cards while i was there because you know who i was gonna buy them for of course of course <laughs> you know but we and then I've, you only, I've only had it once so <laughs> And then you understood. I was yeah, like, it's like well, I, I see, remember but... driving uh, with Brian and Brian's dad, uh, Chopper, and we, they were driving us to Nashville, and I had them try sheet. And I remember Chopper looking at them, and he's like, there's a burger with mozzarella sticks in it? That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, thank you for talking with me tonight. Congratulations thank on you. your upcoming marriage. Thank you so much. And uh, we will hopefully see you on the road soon. Really awesome talking to you. Thanks for having me on. It was really, really fun. Well, I enjoyed it, too. Good night. All right. Good night. Have a good one. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening tonight. Stay tuned for more great music all night long. Don't forget to check out my I'm With Mothership page on Facebook and my blog on SolidRockRadio.org for links to my guests' social accounts. This show will be replayed at 4 a.m. Eastern Time and will be added to the Solid Rock Radio website, archive, and SoundCloud. I pray you have a wonderful week and remember to be kind to one another.